Hey everyone, it's Rebecca with International Nail Art Academy, the mobile manicurist. I am here with this month's Beetle Box, and I've got the product shown that I've used, and throughout the video I'll be showing what it is, but I'll also list the products below in the notes on this video. So for this month's September Beetle Box, you got the Punk Rock Halloween Gel Polish, a Prickly Pear Glitter, Boot Scoot and Spooky Glitter, and also a foot section of inspired nail foil and a set of really pretty assorted crystals. Here's a little video of what those are from the box. All right, so to pre-prep for this, I took two gaudy polishes. I took Sunburst Surprise and I put that on a palette and then I took a little bit of It's Your Lucky Day and put that on a palette and mix those two colors together and then made a base for the foil. You can use whatever you'd like, but put that on and cure it. Then you're gonna get your foil gel out and apply that to the nail. The foil itself is pretty cool because there's a lot of different colors in it. I'm just gonna place it on here and then add little notches in so that I can get some full coverage, hopefully without any wrinkles or too many mishaps and just make it fit well. So then I'm just going to apply pressure and squeegee that on and make sure to try to get full coverage for this. I'm not 100% great at that because I get impatient and it looks like here yeah, I got a couple of spots where I missed in the foil, but we can fix that. So I'm going to try to put it on back where it was and squeegee a little bit there. But in case this does happen to you, I've got a fix. So go ahead and get your metallic glaze, which you need to put over the top of full cover foil anyway, and put that on your nail. Just give it a good coat of that, not too thick, not too thin. Don't cure it. Please grab your Blaze Cat Eye Punk Rock Halloween, put a little bit on your palette, and where there are cracks or missing pieces of foil, this is where it's going to melt right into the metallic glaze and that also adds to the cohesiveness of your design. This foil's got a lot of great colors in it. It matches that Boot Scootin' Spooky glitter and it goes with the gel polish. The whole thing just ties together with this. Then you can cover with your top coat of your choice. Uh, I use the Ladybug Luster Wet Look Top Gel. Go ahead and get the Punk Rock Halloween and coat a whole nail with that. I lost the video for this somewhere, but you're gonna coat that and cure it then I would suggest you get a clear press-on gel or a clear rubber base. Rapid Ready is what I'm using here, and I'm just gonna coat the nail with a really thin, thin layer. Then I'm getting Boot Scoot and Spooky Glitter, and I'm just gonna place it over the top of that. This is the easiest nail that we're doing today, and it's just um, really pretty. The flash glitter underneath the in the Punk Rock Halloween and the green adds some color. So then coat it with the Rapid Ready Press On Gel again, make sure that it's even and flat, and then you can top it with the Ladybug Luster Wet Look Top Gel. For the next nail, again, we're gonna use the Punk Rock Halloween, and we're also gonna use Red Carpet Restore Repair. Okay, so then you're gonna put some on your palette, take a little bit of that Restore Repair Rubber Base Gel, Put it on either side of your nail in a little circle and then grab your prickly pear glitter and you're only going to use one piece on one side and one piece on the other and that's all for this nail. So once you've got those where you want them, cure. Then you're going to take your Punk Rock Halloween Blaze Cat Eye Gel. You're going to make a little teardrop up at the top a little sort of teardrop on one side over the prickly pear and one on the other. We are making a cactus here, so they're pretty easy to form. Just like elongate your teardrop and then bring it down to like a tree trunk at the bottom and spread it out however you want. I made my guy kind of skinny in the middle because I wanted his arms to go and be detailed. And then also the second arm I made a little bit lower here. And just fill them in as best you can and make it look 
you know, cactusy, kind of cute. It's the Blaze Cat Eye Gel will, it flows really easily and it's going to make a really pretty glittery cactus. Take your magnet and make this uh, go in how you want. Give it some definition with the cat eye. And then I want you to take some fresh canvas or white polish, put it on your palette. Next, we're gonna add Vintage Villain Cream Full of Woe. Put a little bit of that on your palette. And we're gonna use a nine millimeter brush. We are going to make little X's for the cacti's eyes because unfortunately he is no longer with us. I mean, he's with us, but he's not with us. And then a little sad face. You can make a happy face, whatever face you feel like making. And then I'm going to take the white and I'm going to make little mummy wrappings. These are going to be based on how your cactus is formed, but you know how mummies look. Make him uh, so that you can still see the glitter underneath. I'm not doing them too thickly wrapped. I'm just adding them uh, for detail and so that you actually know that he's a mummy. And we'll add a little wisp here because it's hanging down. The mummy wrap's coming unraveled. And then a few more on the bottom. Uh, and that would be like so funny to see a cactus wrapped up like a mummy out in the desert. Anyway, um, then we're gonna just go ahead and finish adding a few more lines here and there. This is hanging down over his face and then we'll cure. Then go ahead and top with Ladybug Luster Wet Look Top Coat because this nail looks really good shiny. For the next nail, you're gonna need Gaudi Professional LED Super Glue. Put some of that on your palette. And here we're also designing another cactus. You can do the same sort of cactus that you did on the other nail, change up his arms. Um, and then I took the crystals that we got in the beetle box and just added those because the colors all go together, it works together. Just form them however you want. You can have fat arms or skinny arms or whatever kind of arms you want. Just form the crystals. Then I also decided uh, that it didn't just look good sitting there in the middle and I didn't want to add any paint. I just want the whole nail to be crystals. So we added basically a French manicure in crystals. So this would be a French twist crystal manicure or rather a French twist crystal tip. Very pretty, very shiny, I love it. For the next nail, we're gonna grab the inspired foil Put some foil gel on our palette. And then also, it's your Lucky Day 54G by Gotti. And we're gonna add that to the palette as well. You don't need very much. We're gonna mix it together using the petal brush. And just to tint the gel so we know where we're putting it. And it also adds a little bit of color for the background of the foil. And for this, I've got a matte white nail. And I am just placing this foil gel in a way to make cow spots. So cow spots are not even, they're all over the place. I actually looked up cows to see what they looked like, like their spots, because my imagination for cow spots isn't the best. <laughs> anyway, so I was moved to look for pictures of cows and find how cow spots are. You're gonna just place them however you want, but this green tint to the foil gel will absolutely help you. It's just like how Tracy did the foil gel and tinted it black for those Christmas nails um, for July Christmas camp. Once you're happy with the placement of all your cow spots, go ahead and cure for two minutes. Get the foil that was in the beetle box. It goes really well with the glitter and everything. I chose to go with sort of a green and brown area to add cow feel to it. And I am going to make slits wherever the foil gel is not so that I can get maximum adhesion on there. And then I'm gonna burnish that in. And this time I'm going really, really hard on the burnishing and I'm gonna make sure it goes all over, which it really did. Um, let's see here, pull it off slowly to make sure I got it all. There's some extra in here, so I'm just going to take my tweezers and pull that off. 
You could also use a dusting tool if you don't trust yourself with the tweezers, but where the foil gel is, it will adhere. Do not use alcohol or acetone at this point or you'll ruin the whole nail and you'll have to do it all over again. But just the tweezers or a dusting brush or even your fingers should get it all off. At this point, we would want a top coat with metallic glaze and cure, and then you can top with either the Velvet Touch Matte Top Gel or Shiny. I like it matte. And for the next nail, you're going to get the Minx Gel Polish in Just a Cat Nap. That is another cat eye gel polish. Put a base of that on a nail. There's nothing you need to put under it. Put a base on and cure that. Then we will take and put a second coat on. Do not cure it. And instead of making circles, we're going to make sort of a herringbone pattern. You're going to make diagonal stripes down the side and then turn the nail over and make the same sort of stripes going into the nail. And then in the center of the nail, we're going to make diagonal strikes again and they are going to go up towards the center so that they meet. Um, I didn't quite do it perfectly so I'm just going to fix it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then what I need you to do is get some white gel polish. I'm using fresh canvas here and a nine millimeter brush and a petal brush, whatever you want to work with. The nine millimeter is what I'm using to make a uh, top and bottom and edges of my ghost so I know where to draw and not to go too far out. He's going to be a shapely ghost. So we're going to go out at the top and in at the bottom. And then I'm just going to fix my line a little bit here. Just make sure that you're staying within the lines of what you have and he's going to have a wavy bottom. You could do, you know, the triangles if you don't feel comfortable doing waves. And I am then going to fill this whole thing in. So this is where I'm using the petal brush and I'm just going to do a thin, thin layer because we all know white gel polish has to be put on pretty thin so it does not bubble when it cures. And we don't care about the bumps in the ghost at this point. We know there's a pattern behind there. So the first coat is just going to go on thin, make sure we've got all of him covered. Once that's done, we can cure. We're going to put on a second coat of white gel polish just to make this so that it's a little brighter and a good base for the foil that we're going to use. So once that's on, cure, and then you're going to get the It's Your Lucky Day 54G. Put a tiny drop of that inside of some foil gel again because here we go. We're going to do the same pattern we did on the other nail except we're going to go really small. We'll still use a petal brush because this is really good for making cow spots. And I am trying to make it so that this ghost looks like a little cow. He needs to have a little bit of something up top. We want some where his nose mouth area is going to be. And then just fill in wherever you have, uh, you know, for spots. It's not going to be big giant spots like the other nail. They're going to be smaller so that they stay in balance with the size of the little cow ghost that we've got going on here. And just get it wherever you want the spots on the nail. And then you're going to cure for two minutes once this is done. Again, we're going to come back in with the foil, put whatever part of the foil you want on the cow. I went a little more green with this one, tiny bit of brown, but mostly green. And you're going to burnish it in, peel it off, and then just use a brush to get rid of any excess. A uh, little fleck here that I don't like, so I'm just going to pop that off with a pair of tweezers. I'm going to coat with Velvet Touch Matte Top Gel and Cure. Then I'm coming back with 69G Choco Lots of Love and I'm going to put a tiny bit on my palette and a tiny bit next to the white. And then I'm also going to get the Vintage Villains Full of Woe Cream. So I'm going to take a 9mm brush and here is where I will make little white horns. So I'm going to put two dots where I want the horns to start. I want them to be kind of even. They don't have to be symmetrical or perfect because no cow horns are exactly the same. I was just really excited to do 
Boo haw, howdy ghouls, boot scootin' spooky Halloween nails because I have not seen anybody do these before or do any sort of cowboy Halloween nails like this. So at this point you're going to cure and then you're going to take a little bit of that chocolate lots of love and add it to the white and make horns inside the white horns and then also chocolate lots of love for the ears. I lost the video for that but you'll go ahead and do that and cure and then you'll get a little bit of the full of woe and just add some detail to the ears uh, you know to make a little shadow of the inside of the ears. And then I also took and made little hooves on the cow uh, after I added little legs to him. Apparently the legs were part of the ear video that I lost. But you can figure out how to make little legs and little ears for the cow and then hooves. Then you're going to want to make his face. So start off with full of woe and make little ovals for his eyes. He just needs little tiny oval eyes and then I think at the bottom we're going to make little lines just to give a little bit of definition and make him cute. Two little nostrils for the nose and then you can cure. Go ahead and get some Velvet Touch Matte Top Gel, your petal brush. Then you're going to saturate your petal brush with the matte top coat and dip it in the Full of Woe, the black, and blend it out so you get a sheer sort of gray color or a sheer black. We will then be making lines in the cow to show the sheets. These are so that there are waves in the bottom of the sheet. It will give it a little bit of definition and make sure that our cow actually looks like a ghost and not some weird blob cow shape that we didn't know what we were doing. So in order to give him dimension and a little bit of character, and we're going to just finish him off here, making sure that he has a base so he's not floating in the air. You can either wipe on or dab on the color give it a little bit of shadows like there's some ground under him. If you want him to be floating, you know, you can make the ground a little lower. It's totally fine either way. I chose to go with him actually being on the ground. And just a little nose. He needs some definition in his sheet where his nose would be. So we got a little cow nose going on here and he's getting to be super cute. And then I'm also going to shade around the hole outside of him. I think that he needs a little bit of definition. The background is really great, but in order for him to pop off the nail, we want him to have some sort of shadows and a little bit of dimension. So go ahead and go all the way around the cow. If you need to stop and cure in between in the middle of this, you can totally do that. I did not cure. I just went ahead and go, went all the way around the cow, gave him a little bit of dimension and a little bit of raised, sort of a raised feel. But you get the idea that you just want to go ahead and do that. If you get any gel anywhere on him, just wipe it off with a cleanup brush and then cure. Once you're happy with the way that your cow is popping off the nail. I'm just going to finish adjusting here the way I want uh, for my dimension on the base of him. And once I'm happy with that, I'm going to add a little bit of white to his eyes and then I will cure after that. Go ahead and add a top coat to him. You can either make him matte or shiny. I would recommend shiny, honestly, because of the cat eye in the background. And once you've got that all even out, you can go ahead and cure. For the next nail, we are again going to use Punk Rock Halloween. We're going to coat a black nail with the Punk Rock Halloween. And then we're taking Full of Woe and we are going to make spider lines. We're going to start at the top and draw a line down the center. Make sure that when you are making these spider lines, you're cleaning off your brush in between every line you do and adding more full of woe because if you just draw a line through this blaze cat eye gel it's not going to give you the definition of a spider web that you want 
So really, every time you make a stroke, you kind of have to clean off your brush and add more woe to it. But you get the idea, and most people know how to make a spider web. Uh, we're just going around. It's not high definition spider web. If you wanted something more high definition, you definitely have to have more gel on your brush. But I want a subtle spider line here. I don't want it in your face. So once you're happy with all your spider lines, you've got them all filled in and the black is showing the way you want. You're going to go ahead and get your magnet and add that great silver cat eye reflective uh, line to your web. It looks really good with either a matte or a shiny coat. And for this particular one, I am going to add a spider. So I got the prickly pear glitter. I'm going to get some foil gel and just use it as a little holding spot. So take a dab of the foil gel, put that on, and add a couple pieces of glitter. I am going to just make a spider body here. I am only going to use three, maybe four pieces of glitter. So sort of make a bigger piece of glitter basically with a little bit of dimension there. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm going to cure him and set his little body in place. And you can either make him bigger or smaller. This is a good size for me. So now I'm going to take Blossoms and Baubles, which is a pixie potion. You could also use Pyrotechnic from the Atomic Collection, Elixir of Love, or Gotti Don't Care So There. Whichever color you chose, put some of that on your palette. And also matte top coat your nail. Once the matte's cured, we're going to take the gel that you put on your palette, create a little head for him, and then go ahead and make your spider legs. We want them to be fatter at the base and thinner at the tip. So go ahead and just do your legs the way you want. Uh, the inner legs are usually shorter, and then the second set of front legs are longer, and then the outer legs are longer, and the inner legs on the back are shorter. Um, I have not looked at a picture of a spider in a minute. Uh, usually they all look pretty much the same to me uh, when I see them in person because I'm trying to get them out of wherever they are. But anyway, uh, go around the body, give him a little bit of dimension there where you're creating him. Once you're happy with his little head and his legs, you can go ahead and cure. And then this is the final set of nails. I ended up top coating the spider, but you can see the different ways that I either matte or top coated the nails. And I'm pretty happy with this set. It's actually my favorite set that I've done so far.